Hello everyone, my name is Lukas and I also used to be a member of IFSA uh, through LC Prague and in 2014 me and my friends organized a conference uh, about forest management in the National Park Šumava and here I find myself today working for the National Park uh, and I'm responsible for communication uh, in the Life for Myers project which focuses on restoration of peatlands and other kinds of wetlands here in Šumava Mountains. And today I'm gonna show you a couple of sites which we are restoring uh, within the project and also one site which was restored in 2013. The whole mountain ridge, which is located on the border of the Czech Republic and Bavaria, is covered with wetlands. 30% of the whole area of the National Park are bog forests, waterlogged forests, waterlogged meadows, peaty meadows and spring areas. Unfortunately, in the past, 50% of these wetlands were drained for forestry purposes and agricultural purposes. In 1991, when the National Park was established, the first employees started monitoring these wetlands and also thinking about their restorations. They managed to adopt the first restoration measures and until 2018 they managed to restore up to 600 hectares of peatlands and four and a half kilometers of small mountain streams. The Life for Myers project, which is founded from the LIFE program of the European Union, is transboundary. We have two partners in Bavaria, that's the administration of National Park Bavarian Forest and Bund Naturschutz, and also one partner on the Czech side, and that's the South Bohemian University in České Budějovice. Together, we are planning to restore over 2,000 hectares of wetlands in 43 sites on the Czech side and four sites on the German side. The first project site I would like to show you today is very close to the border with Germany and it's actually really symbolic because it's right on the Iron Curtain which was here during the era of socialism. As you can see behind me, it is a forested spring area and the wet meadows below it and all of this was drained in the past and last year we blocked all the drainage ditches and restored the small streams that are coming out of the spring area. Right now we are standing next to one of the drainage ditches which were here before restoration and you can see it on the photo. To support water retention on site and raise the underground water table we had to fill the ditches with soil but also we used a cascade of wooden dams to stop water erosion. This little forest stream used to flow in the bottom of a very deep drainage ditch. And to stop erosion and drying out of the whole spring area, we needed to bring it back to the surface. To do that, we used a special restoration method of buried wooden dams and creating of a new and shallow stream bed. When adopting restoration measures, we are not only thinking about water, but we are also trying to build the structure of the forest stand to support the water regime as a whole. The forest stand behind me is fairly thick and it's not really favorable for other kinds of plant species. So what we did is that we came in with small clearings to bring in more light and enhance and support the growth of sphagnum mosses and other kinds of plants. Because the project measures cost quite a lot of money, we also need to learn about the success of restoration works. That's why we are monitoring the vegetation, the changes in water quality, uh, the ratio of outflow from the site and the underground water table. Then we compare the data before and after restoration and we get to know if we were successful in terms of water retention, supporting the wetland habitat and slowing down the outflow of water from the landscape. For a long time, all the water from the spring areas was flowing through the system of drainage ditches in completely different directions. When you take a look at the map before and after restoration, you can see that when we adopted the restoration measures, we wanted to make sure that we put it back into the original pathways. And that is the case of the little stream we're standing by, which is one of those marked in yellow in the map. 
We're at the second project site I would like to show you today. And it's an even-aged spruced forest, which was planted before the establishment of the national park. And uh, the reason we are here is that I would like to demonstrate that it's not really necessary to adopt the restoration measures only in protected areas, but you can also do it in a forest which is designated to yield and timber production. It is extremely important to retain water in stands with spruce because with its shallow root system it is very susceptible to drought periods. About 80% of forested spring areas in the Czech Republic have been drained in the past and that is the reason why one of the very important aims of this project is to disseminate the knowledge about restoration sites like this. This forest is also in a spring slope and the little mountain stream here hadn't been here for a while due to drainage. And what happened is that all the spring water coming down these two drainage ditches was directed into the straight way in the bottom of the drainage ditch down the forest. So what we did here again is blocking the drainage channels to slow down the outflow from the area and restoring the original outflow into the small, shallow and slow stream. Right now, we are in a little fragment of alder forest, which was, believe it or not, also drained in the past. And you can see the state before restoration on the photograph enclosed. Talking about the mitigation of climate change, I just want to say that it's not only important to do restoration works in the forest stands, but also to keep these little fragments of forests that are dedicated to the water supply and they are also very important for biodiversity. The third restoration I would like to show you is a bit older. The book forest behind me was restored in 2004 and you can see that the result is fairly decent. The water table in the channel raised up, the wooden dams are working nicely and the whole channel is overgrowing with this sphagnum moss, which is a crucial component of all peatlands. The whole network of drainage ditches, which you can see on the map in light blue color, basically disappeared from the surface and it's overgrown by the sphagnum species, which retains a lot of water. The bog forests at this site developed in the floodplains of a mountain stream, which was also channelized in the past and directed into this deep and straight channel. But in 2013, the restoration works were done and the stream was put back into the original course. When you're working on restoration of a stream like this, you have to strictly follow the river dynamics, meaning that you have to create a shallow meandering stream bed with the faster sections like this and the erosion banks where the water spends its energy, slows down, and like that you avoid the erosion into the bottom and drying out of the area. When you take a look at the map again, the dark blue color is showing the state of the stream before restoration and the red dotted line after restoration. Due to the new shape of the stream, it will always stay at the surface and it can spill into the flooding area during floods. And that means that that will lower the risk of flooding further in the landscape. Well, that's it for today. I'm really glad that I could show you some of the project measures and the efforts that we put into mitigation of climate change here in Šumava National Park. If anybody's interested, you are all welcome for an excursion. Bye-bye.